Hello everyone, I'm Aussie JTV, and today we're going to be answering the question, what is Castle Morahisa? Now, let me get this straight first and foremost. If you like games like Slay the Spire, today we have a deck building roguelike for you. Set in a sort of Japanese, feudal, slightly fantasy setting. I think it uses a lot of like Japanese folklore and stuff like that, which is something which is definitely up my street, as well as, as any of my friends will know, anyone, any game like Slay the Spire, I'm all in. Things like Grifflands, Banner of Ruin, etc, etc. So I think we're going to jump straight in. Oh, sorry, that was very loud. I might have to change the settings down a bit after this. But basically, there are four classes that we can play, which all have their distinct style, is my understanding of the game. So you start with the Monk and the Onmyoji, Onmyoji um, which I think is basically sort of a practitioner of yin-yang and divination. I think for now, we'll start as the Monk. Um, they, from what I've had from a brief look at the game, they have sort of two unique mechanics, which is called meditation and mantra, but I'm not really sure what they do yet. So let's find out. So as we can see, we can get artifacts during our adventure. So I guess these are the equivalent of, um, I've just blanked on what they're called in Slay the Spire, but you know, relics, relics, so passive items that boost us up. So at the moment we've got gain one talent point whenever you explore a new area. And I guess we've got some health, we've got a timer on the adventure, we've got some money for our shop and talents. And this looked really interesting when I when I saw the game. Basically, as you progress through, I think you can get a lot of upgrades to your character and you can sort of choose how you spec them. This reminds me a bit of the Final Fantasy X Sphere Grid for anyone that used to play that uh, many years ago, or more recently, but obviously it came out many years ago. So I think let's get started, let's go. And here we can choose to select a fallen hero. So this is a skill that we can use in battle. So I guess there's meant to be a fallen samurai that we've uh, managed to sort of get their power or or use some of the abilities they know. So I love a good roguelike deck builder and I feel like drawing cards into your hand as full is, is a very strong play, especially if we get some cheaper spells. I don't know what the resource cost is, but let's try that. Uh, so fallen heroes you have linked with will appear here. So you can use their skills in battle to get an edge. So then go, let's go into our first combat. Now I have not looked at our deck. I have no idea what we're going to have, but it looks like, oh, here we go. So to beat your enemy by playing cards in your hand, always simple stuff. Player card requires action points. So okay, the top left is our action points. And we have probably three at the start of our turn. So I guess anything with a blue background maybe, or anything with this blue defense item is a defense card, which will give us armor so that will protect us against enemies and then i would assume anything in red will deal damage to them and obviously it shows what they're doing so we're against a corpse hound so this dog has seen better days i must say i quite like the art style of this um definitely has given me sort of a grift lands vibe in terms of how it's set up against you versus the enemy but it looks like we either can deal four damage or we can gain three armor um and we've got three action points so we might as well guard once and then do three two hits sorry of four damage each to the corpse hound and that will end our go so we should take absolutely no damage. And actually, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn the settings down a bit because I think it might be too fair. It's probably more the in-game in sound. I'm going to drop this slightly because some of the special effects sound very loud, very loud indeed, at least for me. So at the moment, we know he's going to inflict Thunderable. Okay, that's exactly the same as in uh, Slay the Spire. Take 50% increased damage. So this is ah, so this is meditation, the unique act, one of the unique actions the monk can do. So it looks like we can gain armor equal to meditation and... If we get five meditation, we get avatar. So hands, hand cards cost one less action point, but you cannot gain meditation. So that's sort of something where we might use our fallen, fallen soldier, Kuroda Yoshitaka, to when in avatar state, fill up our hand and then just go buck wild on the enemy. But for now, it looks like we've got three action points, so we can just kill this corpse hound with three Naganata strikes. And I believe that, yep, that's victory. So we get some coins. And I guess we'll have shops later on that we can use these on, but maybe also talent points at any point. We'll have to have a look. Oh, so, okay, the shop is always around. I should just read it again. So we could buy new uh, cards. And I guess these are rarities, one star, two star, three star. No idea if you can have a limit to how many you have per per deck or, or we'll see. Probably not, but probably more money for the three stars. So I think for now, let's just continue because we're trying to see what we can pick up naturally. So we've got... 12 armor and 2 meditation. That seems really strong, but it does cost all of our action for the turn. Oh, Jappa. Deal 6 damage if the enemy is affected by Mantra. Okay, so this is something else we've got. Um, so Mantra is the other thing that the monk can do that no one else can do, basically. And I think it's almost like meditation, but you apply a debuff to the enemy. Um, but I don't, we don't have any way to give Mantra at the moment, or at least not from the cards we saw. I'll just double check that. Yeah, we don't have anything. Or we can get Repentance, which will inflict Mantra equal to the current Vulnerable. But we have no way of giving vulnerability. So at the moment, the only one that seems like that it will actually do anything in our deck at the moment is this diamond skin. Now, it might mean that our deck's a bit defense heavy. 
And I'm just thinking, so what do we have? We can gain talent points, we can remove cards. Oh, it's a bit overwhelming at first, but I'm sure we'll work it out. So let's see what these talent points are. So I assume we could pick anything on this these four, this outer ring. So start the battle after resting a camp with two extra action points. Whenever you use a fallen hero skill, gain an action point. Whenever an enemy dies, gain an action point. Or whenever you play a card with void, gain one strength. I don't think any of those are particularly good at the moment. So let's just play the game. I'm not. We'll see what we see. And we have three options. So I'm going to go for the one that is not combat for now. Open the chest, receive a random artifact. Okay, so artifacts, as I said, passive items we get. So you've got the dice. Transmute two random cards and upgrade them. Okay, so we've got an upgraded guard and upgrade... Oh, oh, so when it says upgrade... Oh, sorry, it's transform and then upgrade. So we've got a second diamond strike. I mean, it's good, but I feel like we've got quite a defense orientated deck. And now we've got Havoc. Only playable when you have no other attack cards in your hand. Deal 15 damage to all enemies. So actually, this synergizes quite well with us having quite a lot of defense because it means we won't have a... Uh, we shouldn't have a hand where we're running too many attacks to be able to do that. So then let's just pick one of these combats. I wonder if it matters which one we pick, or whether that means we're going to go up against four enemies. Doesn't look like it. And this time we're against a raven. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to cast this havoc because we have three attacks in hand. So I guess we're just going to defend, strike, strike, and end our go. First bit of damage we've taken throughout the game. And the problem is as well, is it does mean that we're probably just stuck with not being able to deal much damage. What's it going to do to us? It will take 50% reduced damage. Okay, that doesn't mean much to us. We might as well un-anger and gain some meditation. Um, so we're gaining one passive block a turn, basically. And he's doing... Oh, well, they're doing 12 to us. We cannot stop that. So I think we might as well just pop up our diamond skin. Now we're gaining three passive block per turn. And here we should be able to go pretty strong against the enemy. So we can Naganata strike into our Havoc, which should kill... Nice, so that seems really good so far. We'll get some more coins, we pick a card. Oh, these are all purple, so this is a skill now. So I guess this is something that will do something, but not necessarily any damage to the enemy, nor give us any um, armor. So what do we have? For each defense card you play, gain one counter, which will deal damage back to the enemy. Okay, that's interesting. So if we were, if we had quite a lot of block, we, we could tr trigger that into a into a counter. Or Calm Mind, discard any number of cards, then gain an equal number of meditation and then inflict five mantra. So this was mantra what we were talking about before. So when you get enemy gets 10 mantra, they get stunned for one second and, and can't act. But apart from that, that doesn't do anything. I mean, all of these seem like eternal suffering seems like the best for us and it voids. So we only, we only have to use it once in combat and then it disappears, which is quite nice. Um, and then we've now got 150 gold. I'm just seeing what we've got. Gain three talent points. So so maybe we want to save up and then get three, three all at once. At the moment, I'm not feeling like it, there's an absolute need to upgrade our deck. Okay, now we've got this weird fire symbol. So we haven't seen this one before. Hopefully this is interesting. Okay, so this is a basically a rest site. We can rest, but we've got nearly max health anyway, or upgrade one of our cards. Well, let's see what we get. So Eternal Suffering becomes a zero cost card. So that's quite interesting. We've seen the diamond skin upgrade, or we can upgrade the other. The others are all basic. I think we might as well upgrade Eternal Suffering. So that gives us the ability to counter for free once per fight and then a question mark is another thing we haven't seen yet so i'm just going to try all the new things first and foremost we'll understand more about the game the, this mansion used to belong to a wealthy family now it is utterly empty you find an eerie looking face carved into a wall its mouth wide open as if attempting to devour all hmm perhaps i should stick my arm inside well of course we should stick our arm inside just in general in any any roguelike deck builder don't underestimate the power of removing a card i don't mind taking eight damage and the real question is, is what are we going to get rid of? I'm tempted to... We've got quite an expensive deck and we keep both diamond skins, but they are rarer. So I'm sort of tempted to remove a diamond skin, a regular guard, or a regular attack, just so that we can get our Havoc procs more often. Hmm, it's an interesting question. I mean, we're never really going to cast two of these in a row. I think I'm actually going to get rid of one of the diamond skins, which is unfortunate because it's a rare card, but it seems to be the best for us. Well, I like the animation there. And then we might as well kill whatever's over the bridge. Whatever's on the bridge. Is it maybe like a, a guardian, like an oni or something like that? No, it is a snake that seems to have multi-strike. Okay, so that's interesting to know. We can't kill it this turn. So I'm... Hmm. 12 damage is quite a lot to take. And this is only 6 armor. I don't know how... What a full hand is. Is it going to be 10? Let's, let's see. We might as well use this. So we've got now 10 cards in hand. So we might as well, for each defense, gain one counter. And then we might as well play... Three defense cards, I guess. So we should take... Oh, just a little bit of lag there, I think. So we're going to take three damage, but he's going to take nine back. So I'll take that. And hopefully we can do a lot more damage this time. So you do eight damage and take two. 
This does add a poison to our hand. But we, actually, I say take two. We're actually only going to take one because we have one meditation. And the counter stays up, so we should be able to just kill him this turn. This card is in your hand at turn end. You take five damage. Okay, so let's get rid of... Let's void that. Oh, a little bit of lag on the game there. I'm not sure why that was. And then double hit the Naginata strike, and then we should be good to go. Not sure what this lag is. Don't know if it's anything in the settings. Seems to be fine now. And maybe it was my computer that was hanging slightly. And now we have a choice of oh, lose five health and gain three strength. Potentially. Or gain one agility. So increase the armor value you gain from cards. So this is basically like a permanent buff. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, I'm thinking we'll get agility. We're playing quite a defense-focused deck at the moment. So I wonder if there's something we can get that will allow us to basically deal damage based on our defense or something like that um i wonder what these green ones are i guess these maybe you can get on every single character so this seems quite good i mean i guess oh once played this will be removing your deck forever okay oh and i just realized we, we're getting passive talent spots anyway so we might as well start buying some of these um right what do we want so maybe something to do with defense um whenever you play a card with void we do have a card with void um, hmm. There's, there's a lot to, lot to unpick here. A lot to unpick. Recover three health. For each card you draw during your turn, gain one strength. That could be interesting. Um, hmm. I'm just picking the ones that are on this second ring because I'm thinking that's what we're going to get up to. Enemy with Mantra dies. We're not really using Mantra at the moment. Three skill cards on the same turn. They're not the same as defense, though. Ah, here we go. If you don't play any attack cards in a turn, you gain one action point on your next turn. That seems like something we might want to get. So maybe we'll get Void Might because we've already got a Void card anyway. And then we've got... When we get one more... Anyway, we can get Defensive Stance, and then that's going to allow us to get this Tactic Card Restore to Health later if we want. I don't think we'll need it necessarily. Um, and let's just go for a question mark. I mean, in Slay the Spire, sometimes you want to get as many uh, combats in a row, you know, to build your deck, get more um, cards before, before all the enemies get quicker. But I'm quite liking just sort of feeling out, feeling out the game. It's only our first run. We'll learn more and more over time. I'm sure this will reappear on the... The channel more than once so let's have a look well we can basically play almost our entire hand here so they're not actually just let's double check currently aiming and our armor so actually we don't really need to cast any defense spells but we might as well gain one agility so that's a permanent buff um we're not going to play this to gain a counter because we're not going to need it we'll just naganata strike into Havoc. I didn't realize Havoc actually deals 15 damage to everyone. That's really strong for us at the moment. So just trying to make sure we can always get that off whenever we see it would be really good. Now, we can't really get through this armor very easily. And we're going to take 5 damage anyway. So what I'm thinking is we take 5 damage and then we double Naganata Strike the Shieldsman. I'm a bit worried about this archer. I assume he's going to do massive damage this turn. So we really need to see if we can kill them. And yeah, absolutely no problem. I will break the armor and then Havoc to get a double kill but havoc seems very strong for us to have got early i mean obviously it's conditional from being able to use it and then now we've got a defense card so what i was hoping is we see a defense card that will allow us to damage them gain three armor and inflict one random enemy with two mantra so we can start looking at mantra gain eight armor and three counter this is what i'm thinking of but we're gonna have quite a high cost deck which is worrying me slightly I mean, maybe we just skip this. Let's just skip it. I don't think we need another deck, uh, another deck, another card. Maybe we need to think about gaining three talent points at some point, but I don't think it's super necessary. I'm just seeing how long. We need five, so whenever you play attack to cover, store two health. We might as well get this. It's a bit, a bit, bit of passive um, health regen, and then we'll go to a campfire, or maybe not a campfire. And I'm thinking we upgrade this to get more agility. It's just if we get this early on, and maybe there's a way to choose what's cards you'll get near the start of the turn later now i'm assuming this is an elite i think this is what's like an, an oni mask or a mask i don't really know enough but in japan like onis are sort of demons and it looks a bit like that to me and this is a demon soldier so maybe i was right and it starts with gasping we'll start gasping for air upon reaching a tenth multiplier of strength so okay so it's gaining one strength for each attack card we play and then becomes vulnerable once you play 10 interesting Hmm, I'm wondering how you want to do this then. I guess we might as well gain five armor and then attack once, knowing that will mean he does an extra damage to us, but we take any. So I guess you either want to just destroy this guy as fast as possible, or 
I don't know, just tank the damage. So we'll let him hit us for a bit now. I'm trying to get some meditation as much as I can, just so that we are not going to take a ton of damage. But he's not actually... Hmm, he's not dealing damage to us now, so I'm thinking maybe we just do th three strikes. I was... Maybe that wasn't right, because his attack damage is increased by six. Even if we did three attacks next turn, he's not going to become vulnerable with this gasping. So, do we just gain 20 armor? We've got two meditation as well. I do sort of want to play Havoc, though, because Havoc does a lot of damage. So maybe we'll go Unanger, Guard, Havoc. We're taking quite a bit here. Seven damage. It's not insignificant, but hopefully it means... I was going to say hopefully we can kill him this turn, but that's not going to be the case. But let's see. This could be a foolish error, but we'll start gasping for air upon breaching a tenth multiplier of strength and gain two vulnerable. So I assume he's still going to do extra damage to us. But we'll become vulnerable? No. Okay, this is what I was hoping for. So because they're gasping, they're not going to deal any damage to us. So we didn't get hit at all. And I was hoping we'd be able to finish him off this turn. It doesn't look like we will. Now, let me just... A reminder, what happens if we hit five meditation? We get avatar. All hand cards cost one less action point, but you cannot gain meditation. Okay, so we don't... We're not going to proc it here. We might as well just defend. And hopefully we can kill him next turn. It's probably going to be two turns before we can kill him. Um, so, I'm just thinking... We've got four attacks. I'm going to do two attacks and two defenses. We're still going to take four damage, but we're just trying to get to a point where we can Havoc and kill him. And that's exactly what we got. So that kills an elite. And I'm assuming we're going to get a relic here. Oh, maybe not. Okay. So we've got coins. We've got talent points. It's all good. Quest scroll. So can we gain 12 armor in a single turn? Well, we definitely can do this. So that seems like an easy one. Complete a battle without losing health. Upgrade all attack cards in your deck. Now, we don't have that many. It would only upgrade our regular strikes. But that seems like a really strong reward. Or win a battle within four turns. I mean, this seems... I don't know enough about what good skill cards are. But focused defense should be really easy for us to do. Um, so we'll get that. And then we'll see. Is there something good here? Gain six armor plus extra armor equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. I'm just worried about all these um, high cost things. And disarm. Inflict all enemies with one. Deal 25% reduced damage. Or... Hmm. Prophecy. Maybe we can, like, get Prophecy because we can Prophecy into a Havoc just to try and kill a load of weak enemies. And let's go into the hut. Why not? Uh, see what we find here. Nothing can phase us now we've fought the demon. I must say, these things are more horrifying. They remind me a bit of in Binding of Isaac, the Gapers, which sort of have, like, a chest cavity that uh, spits out because th these look positively scary. Right. So, anyway, eight damage. That's quite a lot to take straight away. I'm just thinking, is there anything in our library that we, ch we could just push into Alacrity? I'm just seeing what this does. We'll inflict one disarm. I'm going to prophecy. This might not be the right play to gain agility and then guard. So basically, we're building us up for the future. Um, so we don't take any advantage. I realize I misplayed that. I could have played the counter card, but maybe I can use it for better, better prep later on. Okay, so I think this is a fairly easy turn. We will Naganar to strike, we will Unanger, and then we will Havoc. Basically, if I see that Havoc, I'm going to play that Havoc if, it, if we can, if it's at all possible. So I just think it's better for us. And now, oh, we've been covered in green mucus. So basically, this just clogs up your deck and you want to cast spells to get rid of it. And eight damage here. I mean, I think we're probably just going to do the same again. We are taking damage. Oh, to be fair, maybe we just Diamond Skin. I'm just thinking we Diamond Skin because then we'll get this. Gain 12 armor in a single turn. No, I'm just going to leave it. I'm sure we'll get through the deck once more. And I just, when it, when there's Havoc there, I just want to cast it. Because it's the only way we're going to slowly chunk through these enemies. They are obviously getting quite a bit stronger now as we're getting through the game. Um, eight damage here again. I think we'll just gain meditation. That puts us to seven. So we'd only be taking one damage here. And then I'm equally splitting this just because I think we should be able to Havoc and kill both if we draw it. Unfortunately, didn't draw it this time. Um, I'll gain a counter though. Gain an armor. Play a Mucus and then Giant Toad. Probably didn't need to play the Mucus because I don't think we're going to get round our library again. But I'm just a bit worried that it will constantly be the case. Hmm. Well, this time, are we guaranteed to draw Havoc? So next time we're going to draw Havoc and we're going to draw a Strike, which is 15 damage to everyone, plus the other attack. So that should be fine because even with our weakness, we should be able to kill them both. So I'm just going to do that. Pass our quest. I don't know if we have to click to complete quest. We probably have to complete it after the battle. And yeah, that's exactly right. So deal the Naganata strike and then we'll Havoc to get the double kill. And that will take us through that. Gain some coins. Choose a card. Hmm, Mount Meru. Gain three armor. Each time this card is played, increase its armor value by one. So I assume this gets stronger and stronger over time. I assume this isn't like per 
combat. This is just every time you play it. Why not? We're playing quite a defensive deck. We probably need to buy some attacks at some point. Um, but it doesn't seem like a bad idea. I'm just seeing what we could get here. When you stun an enemy, well, we're not really doing that. Vulnerable, we don't have. I wonder if we can even buy... Can we buy these? Yeah, we can buy at any stage once we've unlocked them. So, for each tactic card you play, a random tactic card is added to your hand. That seems very good, actually. I'm quite liking that. If you do not lose health during the enemy's previous turn, nah. Spend coins. If your hand is empty. When you're in Avatar, meditation stacks you gain instead heal you. Hmm. This could be quite interesting. We don't have enough for it now. But I think for now, we might as well get perfect deliberation. I like having passives, but let's put it that way. We're on 25 health. Do you think we can do an elite? I mean, we're 20 minutes into this episode. If we can't kill him, maybe we'll call it there. It's just a big introduction to the game. Otherwise, we'll see how much further we can get. Hmm. So the Black Tree just seems like a tanky person. Get four armor at turn end and deal six damage. Hmm. I think I'm just going to do the same as what I did before. I'll void into Alacrity Beads. Use that and then cast Unanger. That should mean we take no damage and see what we get after this. Okay, so he's going to do a lot more damage here. Might as well gain more meditation. All I'm thinking is let's... Hmm. We might as well buff with Mount Mary as well. We're taking no damage this turn. All I'm thinking is let's buff ourselves up so that we'll be able to not take any damage and deal more to him later. Well, this is a bit unfortunate. If... No, there's no point using Diamond Skin because then we'll enter Avatar. So let's just hit... Gain armor, gain armor, gain armor. It's a bit of a boring one. He's going to gain retaliate. So basically we're going to take damage. Before taking damage, expend all retaliate and deal three attack against the first attacker. Okay. Well, this is a, this is a horrible hand, I must say. I guess we're just going to take a lot of damage here. I mean, I'm not even going to attack, I think, because it says before taking damage. So I assume retaliate won't prop if we don't hit him. I don't want to hit one damage after we go through his armor just to take three. I think we'll just, we'll just take the hit. I think we did actually take minus three there, but oh well. Um, now, we might as well gain some counter. We can go armor, meditation. I mean, we can play our whole hand, actually. Um, defense, and then deal some damage. We're just not doing much to him, though. We are not doing much to him. Um, hmm. I think it's quite interesting that I'd be focusing more about what the gameplay is rather than, like, the aesthetics and something. That's obviously a good sign that I'm enjoying the game. Yeah, and I think... I guess, well, this one's easy. We'll just keep attacking. Um... And we've got him, to, got him to half health. And considering we haven't had to use a Havoc now at all, it's not too bad. Um, hmm, what do we want to do here? We're almost certainly going to cast Havoc, but it's unfortunate it's not going to do too much. Let's Mount Meru, Havoc into Guard. I'm not using this on Anger because I feel like we've got... Once you see a lot of attacks or a lot of things we want to cast, we want to hit that flow state. So just as a reminder, we're taking a lot of damage here. If we enter Avatar, everything costs one less. So we might as well enter Avatar here and just absolutely go to town on this Black Tree. Overall, this 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 isn't going too badly. Um, I forgot we had counter as well, so he just absolutely destroyed himself there. And did I forget to use this last turn? I almost certainly did. But let's see what we can get here. Remove one card from your deck in this adventure. We probably want to do that anyway. Buy one card from the shop. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking we want a more attack. This is probably better. Um, but I want to buy and see what the shop's like. So let's do that. I don't think we want any of these. I'm debating on anger, but I think keep, keeping the deck slim is probably going to be our best bet. And we could get another Havoc, but having two is going to be really bad because then, you know, if you ever have two in your hand at the same time, you're screwed. Unfortunately, there are no... Is there a refresh? Ah, oh, refresh shop. Here we go. Deal six damage and inflict Mantra equal to their current vulnerable. Well, we don't do any vulnerable. Deal four damage plus... Hmm. None of these are particularly what we want, I'm going to say. But maybe we'll take the Repentance. At least then we can... We don't deal any vulnerable, though, so we can't... Both of these seem a bit not great. I'm going to take the Force Charm because it's better. It's at least got some upside depending on what other other cards we get. And then, let's see, we might as well... Actually, let's get out of the shop. We're going to skip these, won't we? Flick 5 Mantra. Yeah, we're going to skip these. And then we'll unlock both of these. Oh, so we have a choice. That's really interesting. So I'm thinking we'll probably upgrade this because it will get stronger over time. Or we'll choose two cards from your library. Hmm. I think we'll take Mount Meru upgraded. We're playing quite a defensive deck at the moment. And now we get to transmute a card and upgrade it. So I'm going to transmute a defense, I think, because I want to keep some of the attacks that we have. And hopefully this will become an attack, is what I'm thinking. Okay, and flip five mantra. At least we can get people up to the point where we're taking damage. Let's go to... I think this was the campfire. Oh, no, this is... The, okay, this is the, the artifact, actually, not the relic. But when refreshing the shop, one of the new class cards will always be free. Now, that sounds amazing, considering we just have quite a lot of money. Let's Let's try that out. Let's refresh. Oh, it gets more expensive every time. Okay, that, that makes sense then. And then Prophecy is free, so we might as well pick that up. 
Deal six damage, do deal two times extra if you have less than 50% health. I'm thinking we might take this. Um, yeah, let's take this, and I think that is fine. Draw three cards is interesting, especially with getting into meditation faster. I'm going to take that as well. Why not? We'll spend a lot of money, but hopefully that'll boost us. And we'll go for another elite. My general practice is going to be, let's go for every elite we can, at least so we can suss out more about the game. Interesting that this one is a multi-elite. There's two enemies here. Um, so I'm thinking we could try and Havoc or something, if possible. I think we're always just going to Prophecy into our Alacrity Beads. Oh. Um, cast that and then might as well gain five armor. We're gonna take a little bit of damage this turn, but we're, it's all about setup. It's all about setup. It's only two damage anyway. I mean, we are slowly chipping down, but I'm not too worried. And then we have prophecy again, but I think Mount Meru, Naganata Strike into Force Strike. Now I'm making a really oh we could I forgot we could get another card. There's no other card we really want at the moment. We will have zero energy if we do. Now, I'm just making a play because this is so much weaker than her. I wonder if she spawns more if you kill kill him. So I'm going to try and avoid that. Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess I'll poison. I just want to take less damage this turn. So it's not a great turn for us. So I'm going to kill kill the spider. And hope this is easy. Oh, no. One, one strength and one sticky. What does sticky mean? I don't want to be sticky. This monk, look, look, this is a beacon of uh, cleanliness, right? I mean, I guess he's a traveling, wandering monk. There's probably some dirt in there. But he looks like he's really trying his best to keep everything look good. And um, we've now got the Wounded Pride buff, which is what I was hoping for. And he's not, they're not doing anything to us, so we might as well just keep striking. Hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll draw Havoc next turn and kill. And I think that is a... Oh, okay, so Sticky means you're, you can't play attack cards. So... I mean, I had the right idea. I just didn't realize that's what would happen. So we'll end. Unfortunately, we're not going to get Havoc this turn, that means. S unless... No. Hmm. It's a bit of a shame we can't... Well, we might as well inflict Mantra to to them. So because if we get that again, we can stun, stun her and deal more damage with some of our other spells. So I think we should be able to kill her this time. Let's see. Six plus Target's Mantra. So that should be 11. And then Wounded Pride to finish off. See, that wasn't too bad. We do probably need to find a Rest Site at some point so that we can... Uh, heal let's see play three attack cards on the same turn play three skill cards on the same turn or defeat three elite enemies in this adventure hmm well this is going to take longer to actually proc this should be easy but i almost want to upgrade the attack let's get this let's upgrade our skills and we're getting some more attack options deal four damage each time this card is played it's actually point increased by one but it's damage is double so okay so it costs one to do four damage two to do eight damage three to do 16 damage interesting when entering, when gaining medication, recover. okay, I think we're going to take Nature's M Plus because we need a bit of passive healing and we're casting a lot of meditation spells anyway. And I think I'm going to go, well, we'll go for a question mark. Maybe there'll be a healing question mark. Lose three health, gain 100 coins. I'm going to do it. Might not be the right idea. Um, but we do have eight talent points. Is, there was something in here about healing. I mean, maybe we just increase, oh, we can't quite cost that. Whenever you lose health, draw a card. Your heart is empty. If the enemy breaks your armor, gain one stack of meditation. Now that we might do. I'm going to get this because it will synergize with that, that Zen that we just got. And I'm actually going to skip the elite and go to the campfire and heal. It's only 15 health, but we were a bit low. And it looks like we're going to hit a campsite again. I assume that means we're about to fight a boss. So I'm going to rest once more. And lo and behold, a boss has arrived. This will be interesting. So we'll probably after this, whether we live or die, we'll end the video there. But definitely expect this to come back to the channel. This is a weird looking maggot thing, that's for sure. So it has, it will restore full health at the end of its turn and will create a flesh worm spawn upon dying. So I assume it sort of splits into more as we kill it. I'm glad that we got alac alacrity beads on our first go. Unfortunately, we can't play Havoc unless we're willing to take eight damage. I'm not willing to do that. So we'll just chip away at them. And with that four health, we're eventually going to have to do something to him. So let's see. Might as well. I'm thinking we... Well, actually. We, I think we're just going to prep. I mean, we'll spit out eggs. That's a bit worrying. Maybe we'll just do four damage then. I'm just going to keep trying to chip away. I was going to use Mount Mary to buff it for later on. And these are creepy. What is this creature? This is a scary creature, that's for sure. And it's trying to grow. So I assume we want to kill these things, that's for sure. Hmm. Nothing I'm particularly fussed about there. I mean, we could prophecy one, but I think it's probably just going to be... Wait, what does this do? Eight armor, end of turn. Well, we're not going to do any damage to them anyway. Um, hmm. Do I just... I'm just going to diamond skin for a bit of healing. I'm just worried that we're not dealing anywhere near the amount of damage we need to to these guys. And they're all going to pop out and um, absolutely destroy us. So, let's see. Hmm. 
yeah, we're just not dealing much damage, are we? We've got nothing we can draw that was really going to help us. I guess we're just going to hit him, the main enemy, just because we can't break through this eight armor, which probably means these are now going to spit into like giant enemies and we're going to get absolutely destroyed. Okay, we need to cast our Havoc now when we draw it. I almost think this is a, a must do um, and just try and do some damage off the board. Thing is, do we kill the things that are alive or do we try and stop these things from spawning? I'm going to go into this, into Havoc, and then guard. I think it's our best bet. We're still taking a bit of damage. We need to clear all these, like, ads from the boss. Oh, what is this? Slimy sounds. This is just one creepy boss. That, must, that has to be said. Oh, dear. And they're doing eight damage to us. We can't kill. We do have, le do we have, le we don't have less than 50% health, so we can only do 14 damage. So we're not killing one of those. Unless we bring... We can gain bring Mount Meru in, but it's only a little bit of damage. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I think we're just gonna wounded pride, guard, and now gonna do strike. The thing is, I sort of want to use these prophecies to get them out of our deck, which sounds strange, but if we get a thin deck, we can cycle through to the havocs more frequently. And with the amount of enemies that we have here, oh, we're in our we're in our avatar state, so we might as well cast everything, to be honest. Um, and we should hopefully not take any damage this turn. Get rid of the mucus and thirteen. I'm actually. Some people may say this is a stupid idea, but I'm trying to get things low so a Havoc's going to kill multiple. Um, but we're not really doing any damage to the enemy, which is a bit concerning. Well, I'm going to... Ooh, I'm going to Prophecy in the Havoc. So 17 damage, so that's a kill. That's not quite a kill. And we're not going to kill there either. Hmm. Maybe not the best plan, but let's let's have it. We killed those two. I mean, the, the boss is taking some damage. It's just very slow, and we've already lost nearly half our health. Um, so that's Eternal Suffering. We're going to put up two guards this turn. And that will at least give us some passive damage to the enemy. Um, and we didn't really take that much anyway. It's like we're, we're hitting a nice uh, equilibrium, I feel, um, with this. And he, they're doing no damage to us, so let's just go for the kill. As much, as, much damage as possible on these guys. I mean, they're going to spit out more eggs. At some point, we do need to attack the boss. I mean, these aren't doing too much damage to us, to be absolutely honest. Um, what's our meditation? It's on one. 22 armor is good, though. I think I'm just going to gain gain 22 armor. We get a little bit of healing from it, not taking any damage. We just need to somehow break these. Maybe, maybe we just wait for these to open. I don't know. I'm not too worried. So, let's have it. This doesn't quite kill him. Oh, it does give us two. We can't get anything good from here, though. So let's just get rid of these mucuses. It's going to clog up our deck if we're not careful. Well, wow, the slash from spawns. Everything just looks so ugly. I'll be honest, how do you get these little tentacles into like this sort of gaping mouth? Because I'm assuming these are the babies. Um, okay, let's... Oh, that is unfortunate. I didn't realise. So once these things break open, they get full health again. So maybe we'll just inflict mantra to this guy. We're not going to take any damage this turn. I'm just not worried. I feel like we're just slowly getting chipped away. This is hopefully going to be a big damage turn. So 20 damage, 29, 38. So we can do 38. So we can kill one of these. Just whether we want to actually deal all to the enemy. Because this will do an extra 14. Hmm. Mucus. I think we're just going to kill one of them. So strike into force chant into havoc. And that way we only take three damage. And we're slowly dealing damage. Hmm. I'm not sure. Flash Realm, it's nasty, man. It's nasty. Uh, not really much we want to do here. I mean, we, it's unfortunate that we can't kill in one hit. I mean, maybe we'll just Scripture Study, get, draw three cards. We drew a Mucus, which is maybe not ideal, at least, but at least we're getting it, cycling it through. I just realised we've got a Diamond, but well, we still can. Let's use this, bring everything to zero. Oh, this is a much better idea. What can we get from our... I mean, so a lot of these are going to be zero cost, aren't they? So, might as well get Havoc out. Now that's going to kill this guy. 23 damage. What are we getting? What's increasing our strength every turn? I was wondering this. Something's giving us a buff, which is... I'm definitely not complaining, but I feel like we haven't cast anything that should do this. Um, so, let's... Hmm. Wounded Pride, Naganata Strike into Havoc. And then we might as well guard, so we take no damage. I think this is... Hopefully going to go well. It's what it's more just what does Split do? What is Split going to destroy us? Are we going to be regretting everything when that happens? Um, probably. But let's play our Mount Meru. And we're taking 
I'm always going to forget which one's the meditation. So we have no meditation at the moment. So at the moment, we're going to take one damage. That's probably... That's that's fine. Let's just do deal damage. Why is buffing our strength, though? Is it something that he's doing? It's the only thing I can think of, because we don't have anything ourselves that should work. Uh, if enemy breaks your armor, gain one stack of meditation. It's going to be one of these, right? I've probably forgot that I even bought it. Ah, oh, whenever you play a card with Void. So, that, so, ah, these mucuses is what's buffing us. I was like, we don't have that much Void stuff. Anyway, let's see. Let's kill the Flesh Worm and let's see what happens. Oh, so it's just a spawn. I thought that was going to be much more difficult. Um, might as well get some block. And then it's a shame that we can't kill one of these. What I should have thought about, actually, is if we'd avoided first, this would start dealing 13 damage and we could have killed someone. But... You know, you live and you learn. I think now we should just go on to the offensive. I don't, I'm not too worried about having the mucus. I'm just getting ready for a big havoc because the havoc now is going to kill all three of these, I think. Maybe not quite this one, um, but that's not too bad, I guess. Hmm. Well, we might as well kill them. I was like, is there a reason? Not I should have played mucus there just in the case we go round again. Um, but at least mucus isn't an attack card, so it's not stopping any of our... Okay, so let's just get rid of these two at the back. I know we're not really building ourselves into our Havoc very well, but not the end of the world. Definitely not the end of the world. So, Strike into Havoc. We don't have any zero-cost cards, do we? No, so we might as well meditate. I was hoping we could Scripture in and get a combo off and kill them both, but we'll do it this turn. I should not have said we'll do it this turn. Um, I guess we're just going to gain a load of defense. I mean, this one's going to kill us, kill itself on the counter. And then this one's just going to die. Okay, first boss down. Not too bad. I was a bit frightened at first, but it all turned out for the best. And we get start battle with an extra strength. That's not a bad thing. Complete a battle without using a single defense card. We're not going to do that, let's be honest. Use six fallen hero skills. I keep forgetting this even exists. So I'll have to get better at that. Please remind me. And win a battle within three turns. This is going to be quite hard as well. But I'm going to take it and get the three talent points. Oh, choose one of the cards. I don't... Hmm. Smash. We can't smash and then have it. If we had something that gave us an extra energy, let's turn start, reduce the action point. Well, we might as well take Devotion because it's a tactic. We get some healing from tactic, etc. And now we've moved on to the second area, but that will have to wait for a follow-up video. For now, this is What is Castle uh, Morihasa? And if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe, especially if you want to see this become a bit more of a long-running series. I definitely think it will do, but I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And this is Aussie J signing off.